Coming up on Hawk TV, we take a look at how Student Council made its way through Homecoming Week, an American Sign Language field trip, and the school's student resource officer. Good morning, Haven High School. I'm Landry Dale. And I'm Ava Caballero Romo. And this is Hawk TV for Friday, October 29th. Student Resource Officer David Lee has been on campus for almost a year now. Alex Salazar takes a look at his role at school. While picking his college major, Campus Officer David Lee chose criminal justice, and since then he's worked in many different departments, from financial crimes in New Jersey to now working as a student resource officer for Hebron. Uh, so prior to Hebron, uh, I was working patrol for the Carrollton Police Department, uh, and I did some uh, criminal investigations with that as well. Uh, but prior to Carrollton Police, I was a detective over at New Jersey, and I typically worked a lot of financial crimes. Principal Amy Bouton believes that Lee makes Hebron a more secure and safer environment for students and staff. I definitely feel like having a um, uniformed police officer on campus definitely adds to the safety element for students. Since working in the field of criminal justice, Lee has noticed a change in his thought process while doing everyday activities, even outside of work. It has affected me in, in how I kind of approach different situations, and that might be as simple as you know, going to a racetrack for a soda. Uh, you know, I think anybody else would just be going to a racetrack and get a soda and come out, but I'm constantly thinking of situations, I'm constantly thinking of who's that, what are they doing with their hands, and stuff like that, even if I'm off duty. So I'm um, constantly head on a swivel, and that's how this job has affected me. Assistant Principal Jacob Garlinger likes the way that Lee enjoys talking to students while also handling their situations. I like him a lot, and because he's he's good for kids. Like it's, I, I mean, like I said, it's police in schools is a divisive topic, and but when you really kind of dig deeper into like the someone's character and their, uh, you know, you see them do their work and how good they are for for kids, it, it makes that decision easy like it's it's not controversial for us because we have a fantastic person in that role. Lee says that it's important for him to give students a positive outlook on police officers. With today's climate with the you know the view the microscope on police officers uh, you kind of get a, a view of what they want you to see police officers as and I, my, my main goal was really to um, interact with you guys, with, with kids, um, because I may be your first ever interaction with a police officer. And so I, I would want that to be positive. And if there's ever an issue, I don't want y'all ever to be afraid to call me, contact the police. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Alex Salazar. Thanks, Alex. Remember that if you need something, Officer Lee is a resource for students. After weeks of preparation, the Student Council put on a homecoming for the first time since 2019. Lily Walters takes a look into a busy month for Student Council as they take on new challenges. Last year, COVID-19 impacted many aspects of the school. That included the homecoming parade, football game, and dance. Stuco President Paige Zagumni explains how the Student Council is different from last year. Definitely there were more in-person events before COVID and then we had to switch to a mostly online you know, interaction through like people being at home or just interacting on Instagram, Twitter, social media in general. And now we're getting back to 
um, mostly smaller in-person events outside of like pep rallies and sports events. At the beginning of August, COVID-19 cases began to rise again. But since then, average cases in Texas have dropped to about 200 a week, finally letting the school hold a variety of events. LAC Advisory Chair Asil Matani expressed how they were concerned. At the beginning of the school year, we were scared that we would go back to virtual because cases were rising again. But thank God that, you know, COVID calmed down and we were able to, you know, have a homecoming dance this year because we were scared that homecoming might get canceled or something like that might happen. With increased vaccine availability and cases slowing down, Vice President Morgan Smith says LASD has lowered restrictions on certain events that can be held. Homecoming is a lot more different than last year because we are doing a lot more than last year with decorating the school and with the events that we're now allowed to hold. So like the dance last year, we didn't have a dance. And so this year planning the dance is a whole nother thing on top of just the school decorations. Mitani says it was beneficial for the school to have homecoming later in the year than usual. We had about two, three months of you know, preparation time, so we were able to, you know, order decorations more in advance, order stuff like that, and um, we were able to just have more time for preparation. You know, I feel like this year, especially with more students back, we were, more, we were able to get more students involved at homecoming this year. With new students on campus, some with only virtual high school experience, Zagumni says the biggest challenge was getting students excited and involved. Um, our biggest challenge is probably making sure students want to be involved in our events and making sure they're actually uh, interactive for them and that they are able to participate in the ways that they want to. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Lily Walters. Thanks, Lily. Homecoming events concluded on Saturday. In honor of Halloween season, we asked two students to play a costume game. Let's take a look. Oh God. Really get an idea. Oh God. <laughs> Okay. Okay. What is this? Is this a tail? Okay. I think I know what I'm gonna do. I think I got this. Ah. Ooh. Don't really know what I'm gonna do. But we're gonna figure it out. Oh, I put those on backwards. Looks so good. I'm so hot. Okay, makeup time. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. We're not going to use that. I did not have a plan going into this. We're just kind of putting colors in my face. Glitter. Glitter. Ooh, a smear. She's so cute. I'm done. Okay, I'm actually not, I'm done. Done. I'm a um, dead cowboy security guard. My idea behind this whole outfit is I'm pretty sure her name is like Madonna or something like that maybe. But like I'm a vampire too. So it's like, you know, the Cullens got me. I'm not really sure this is like a, a rain jacket or a poncho, but I feel like she just throws everything together. So I think she'd wear this because it looks super cute. I still wanted to, you know, live out my dream of being a security guard. And I'm also a cowboy because cowboys are cool. Because it's Madonna. Thanks, Cindy Carroll and Simon Shaw, for participating. Be sure to vote your favorite costume on our Instagram at HubenHawkTV. As the school year progresses, senior athletes have an important decision to make. Reagan Mitchell takes a look into how these athletes decided where to spend their future. Every senior has to make a decision about their future after high school. 
However, less than 2% of student athletes have the opportunity to continue to play their sport for a Division I school. I'm super excited. It's like my childhood dream that I like, if you would have told me in seventh grade that I was going to be a D1 athlete, I would have been like, yeah, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's really awesome that I've gotten this point. Senior Joe Agniabadi says that there is a great deal of stress that comes with the recruiting process. Uh, being recruited, it was pretty stressful just because you're worried about like where offers are coming from and if you're going to go to school for free and all that stuff. I mean, it's really hard and like, getting caught up in social media and seeing how many offers like people in the natural place will get and you're trying to match that because it's just a lot of rankings and stuff like that that's uh, really stressful but I just try to stay in my I just try to stay in my own lane and work ended up working out for me so. Bowman says that competing has been different since the recruitment process began. There's more pressure to perform well and better than previous meets. I would say that there's a lot of eyes on you, um, especially being like nationally ranked. Everybody knows who you are in the throwing community, in the track and field community. Um, so like any mistakes that you make in your recruiting process or just in life, you know that people are seeing you doing this. Um, if you don't have a good me, if you don't perform the way that you wanted to, you know that everybody's seeing you, so that can be really stressful. The athletes say that they deal with their pressure by putting it back into their sport and looking to their teammates for inspiration. I think just remembering like my goals and knowing that like I've ran those times or I've had hard races before and I know I can like get through that. And just trusting like my teammates too. I feel like my teammates can help me like carry carry that stress forward. I would say honestly my sport is my therapy so just trying to get away from the pressures of being a recruit I guess yeah it's just to throw more. Additionally the athletes say that it's nice to feel the support from their friends and family. My family is so supportive um, and my coaches and my teammates and so I'm super super blessed and thankful to have them um, by my side throughout this whole experience. Anira Bobby says that he's excited to play and represent his college next year. It means a lot, you know, just to be able to represent Dartmouth while I'm playing football. It's a pretty cool feeling and I'm really looking forward to it. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Reagan Mitchell. Thanks, Reagan. Sports schedules are on the HHS website for your last chance to see these athletes represent Hebron. Last week, students in ASL got the opportunity to take a field trip to go to a deaf convention at Tarrant County Community College. Isabella Garcia got to take a closer look into what goes on inside the convention. ASL club member McEwen Merritt says as a person who is hard of hearing, Deaf Deaf World is a great way for students to meet and talk to deaf and deaf blind people. Deaf Deaf World is kind of like a uh, convention uh where hearing people can uh, meet deaf people and be able to see how deaf people uh, c communicate and the different ways of communicating between the blind deaf and blind and just deaf like how they are similar but not the same since ASL is the third most used language in the United States, ASL teacher Michelle Shadow says it's important to know how to communicate with other deaf people. For all people who are learning ASL to go out and meet deaf people, um, that's the best opportunity to learn a language is to really use it. You come to class every day and you learn, 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 learn. And then if you go out in the world and you never use it, then that information is just kind of stored in the back of your brain until you need it. This is senior Deja Young's first year going to Deaf Deaf World, and she says it helped her see deaf people signing, how their fluency worked, and to learn more about the language. I wanted to meet with other deaf people. I've never met a deaf person before, so it was a really fun experience because I got to dive myself into the deaf community. Young says her time in the ASL class has shifted the way she interacts with others outside of the classroom. ASL changed my viewpoint on the world because I'm more considerate on how I like talk and think and say things. Shadow says there are misconceptions about people who are deaf. The trip to Deaf Deaf World allows students to see the similarities between themselves and those who are deaf. I mean, another thought is that a deaf people who use ASL are disabled and they're not. Um, they're just like you. 
They just use a different language. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Isabella Garcia. Thanks, Isabella. If you want to join the ASL club, you can reach out to Deja Young. After starting the season with three consecutive losses, the football team is now in a strong position for playoffs after a 4-1 and one start in district play. Ayman Yassin takes a closer look at the season thus far. The football team has faced a difficult season so far and is heading into their next game tonight. Head coach Brian Brazel says that the season has been challenging, but the team is doing well. Her kids have done a tremendous job of bouncing back from um, some tough. I mean, we played a very, very tough non-district schedule. We lost to two uh, state-ranked teams the first two weeks, and uh, and we got beat pretty handily. And uh, a lot of people weren't uh, jumping on the bandwagon at that time as far as wanting to support us. And but again, we stayed together and we just kept working and. Um, so I'd say, you know, when you, you evaluate it, you know, regardless of, you know, what happens this week, it's about, you know, it's been a, it's been a great turnaround for our season. It's been a great turnaround of us uh, doing things, but we knew we had a good team coming in. Senior Fred Ware says that accountability and teamwork are why the team has played well this season. Everybody's role is important. Some people might not play as much as others, but every, every time someone gets in the game, they go and do their job, and that helps us win. We're really organized, and we execute pretty well. After losing last Friday's game against Marcus, Hebron is locked in for the playoffs with a 4-1 district record. Senior Carter Brock says that the team could have done better, but it's hard to win every game. It was rough. We definitely should have beat beat Marcus, but I mean, at some point you gotta. There's some there's some um, some negatives and some bad things that happen in the season. You can't go. It's hard. It's really hard to go perfect. After that 4-0 winning streak. Um, there, you're going to have some rough spots, and that was our run rough spot. And hopefully we can uh, pick it up these next two weeks before playoffs. With the next game tonight against Plano West, Brazel says that he can't control the opponent, but he can have the team practice and prepare the best that they can. The bottom line is I can't control Plano West. I can't control Marcus. All we can do is control what we do at Hebron. And so if we go out and we practice hard and work hard and get a good game plan together, you know, we we'll give ourselves the best chance to be successful in those game nights. And so. And that's how we prepare and that's how we process it. And regardless of our opponent, it should not ever affect how we approach things. We've got to get ourselves ready to play and be the best we can be. Reporting for Hawk TV, I'm Ayman Yassin. Thanks, Ayman. The varsity team is playing Plano West tonight. In other sports news, the boys golf team plays at Old Brickyard Golf Course today and tomorrow. And the wrestling team is competing at Grapevine tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's it for today's episode. I'm Landry Dale. And I'm Ava Cavietto romo Have any story suggestions? Email us down below. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And... Happy Halloween!